that badly. Um, during the summertime, I'm unable to come down to Ukiah due to your air quality. Number one in the air quality area, the DEIR requires upon air quality modeling for all analysis. How was the air quality model calibrated? Number two in this area, is there third party verification for the model accuracy? What, are, what air quality monitor, monitoring will occur to verify the DEIR projects? And I have another question. What was the mitigation if the DEIR air quality figures are found to be incorrect by underestimating the pollutant loads? The DEIR states a modern state of the art asphalt plant will be built. Will the state of the art asphalt, uh, will the state of the art concrete plant be built? If this 100 year project pro moves forward, a state of the art concrete plant must be required using best available technologies. Otherwise, my quality of life will be limited due to the air quality becoming less. Thank you very much. Thank you. Leo Frazier, followed by Rosamond Crowder, please. Any chance I could bargain for those 41 seconds that Jan didn't take? Just kidding. I'll be as brief as I can. Good morning. My name is Lael Frazier, and I'm, I serve on the Keep the Code Steering Committee as well as some of those others that you have seen. I brought some pictures. I'm going to talk as fast as I can. Here's a picture of the uh, proposed existing, this is the existing site, as you can see, rangeland and all sorts of nice, uh, wonderful oak trees that are there that uh, sort of belong there, we'd like to thank. Here's a picture of the 60-foot uh, silo as proposed at that site. According to, as uh, Leonard Charles himself said this morning, there are significant adverse impacts that would remain even after the mitigation measures were implemented for all of the items in the area of aesthetics. I have some questions and proposals and solutions to further mitigate the significant and unavoidable impacts referencing the views. The existing site picture I've already showed you. Okay, so the mitigation plan of the DERR is to plant 15 gallon sized trees and paint the buildings green. Even after mitigation, there would be the intrusion of industrial, this is quoted from the DERR, the intrusion of industrial processing equipment and facility rural open space viewscape would be substantial. What I would like to propose, oops, it's hard when you have a limited amount of time here. Sorry about that. Here we go. So since the proposed industrial site calls for a large amount of earthwork, why not impose a far superior mitigation as follows? A height limit for the silo in accordance with the county's existing industrial standard of 65 feet in conjunction with a 20 foot tall planted berm along Black Bart Road with a crest of 20 feet wide on type, top with 35 to 40 foot trees tall at the time of planning. This would help mitigate the view and some of the noise from the industrial applications spilling into the nearby rangelands. There would be no way to mitigate the view from the industrial facilities from the decks and backyards of the residents who can already see this area. There would also remain a significant and, a, and an unavoidable cumulative impact for the next two items, the views from Ridgewood Ranch. There were no mitigations for this impact. To help reduce the adverse effect of the view from the Church of the Golden Rule, why not erect a similar berm as I just mentioned and plant 35 to 40 foot tall trees as well? The views from the highway. Mitigation plan in the DEIR calls for fast growing trees to be planted to provide a 20 foot above the highway elevation. And why not erect trees or plant trees that are 35 to 40 feet in height instead of the proposed smaller trees? Here's a picture of the nighttime view. This is referencing the lighting of the processing facilities and the night views at the proposed operation of 100 nights per year. I ask you, what evidence is there to support the need for nighttime operation? Would you agree that the easiest and most logical mitigation to the problem of lighting impacts for nighttime operation be best mitiga mitigated by not allowing nighttime operation at all? And lastly, the optimal way to avoid significant impacts is to maintain the status quo. Keep the rangeland as rangeland. Thank you, you Ms. Frazier. I know you want to keep this right. Is that true, Christy? Rosamond Crowder, followed by Chris Gibson, please.
Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm here on behalf of the Willits Environmental Center. And the center uh, is asking that you reject the DIER as it is written and resubmit it with uh, corrections. Uh, we're particularly concerned about three general areas. The failure of the DEIR to fully address the impacts of this unprecedented proposal to allow heavy industrial uses in area zone rangeland. The massive scale of the quarry expansion. Two, the failure of the DEIR to adequately address the environmental impacts of the county's proposed zone change. And three, the inappropriateness of attempting to analyze two distinct and fundally di fundamentally different projects, the counties and the applicants, in one environmental impact report. We believe the county's proposed zone change requires its own EIR separate from the subject DEIR for the Harris Quarry expansion. The DEIR fails to even include the language of the proposed zone change and does not fully explore the possible impacts in various locations in the county where the zone change might apply. It, the zone change would have a different analysis for growth inducing impacts, for cumulative impacts, for specific environmental I mental impacts, and most importantly, a different set of alternatives than those that have been put forward to address the applicant's project. For example, several of the alternatives discussed in the subject DEIR are characterized as meeting some or none or all of the applicant's objectives. Northern Aggregate's six clearly stated objectives, implying a certain level of feasibility and thus priority. But do any of these alternatives meet the county's objectives? In fact, what are the county's objectives? We don't know because the county's project has not been clearly defined nor its objectives stated. There is no explanation of how a use permit is related to the new designation. The applicant has requested a permit to be issued for the life of the quarry. Presumably, this same kind of permit would have to be offered to other quarries. In fact, any area in rangeland that has a potential for mineral resources. The DEIR falsely assumes quarries currently protected by the Williamson Act would not be potential sites for the zone change. In fact, Williamson Act is only a temporary protection which must be renewed by the property owner. We have other comments as well, and I'm submitting this. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Gibson, followed by Cynthia Razor Gervons. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Chris Gibson. I've been a resident of the county for 30 years. Uh, I'm not opposed to the current quarry operations or rock extraction or appropriate use of industrial land. However, this project is a radical change from county policy. The proposed project requires a countywide 100-year change to the zoning code for a single applicant employing seven people. This change is necessary to allow industrial operations in an area zoned rangeland. This decision will affect county residents living in 2108. It is appropriate to open up rangeland to, is it appropriate to open up rangeland to industrial uses Zoning wisdom would indicate not. The project seeks a 900% increase permit term for a 10-year permit to essentially to become a 100-year permit. Has the applicant met all use permit requirements over the last 10 years? Has the applicant started the approved reclamation plan based on concurrent reclamation? The proposed increases Aggregate production by 167 percent from 75,000 cubic yards per year to 200,000 cubic yards per year. What is the current county aggregate demand compared to current county quarry production? 